Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Well, hello, hello everyone, and welcome to another weekly video. For those of you that follow my channel regularly, there's a good chance that you also watch Nick Page's videos on his channel. <laughs> If you don't know who Nick is, I'll leave a link to his channel up in the corner here. Several weeks ago, Nick posted a video about a new tool in Photoshop called the Remove Tool. And for those of you that use Photoshop, you know it's a great tool, mainly because it takes a lot of the fuss out of accurately cloning unwanted items from your photographs. And as Nick stated, the Remove Tool is excellent. But what if I told you that there's an even better way for removing items from a scene, especially if they involve some complexity? As good as a remove tool is, there are some photographs that it does have a hard time with, and I'll show you those uh, right now. So if you're intrigued, keep watching. Okay, I've opened up a couple of images here just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Now, this uh, version of Photoshop is actually uh, Photoshop beta version and you can you can download this from Adobe but you definitely need the beta version right now to be able to use the feature that I'm going to show you so if you go over to your panel some of you might have it on the right side I have mine on the uh, on the left side here here's the the remove tool that Nick was talking about and if we just zoom in on this photograph here uh, say I wanted to take out this big stick here. So we'll just make it a little bit bigger. And all you have to do is just paint over the item that you want to remove. It doesn't have to be terribly accurate. Uh, now these files are quite big, so it might take a little bit of time. And you can see it's done an okay job, but if we zoom in, there's some weirdness happening in there. And we could probably go over some of those sections like this section here um, and try and, and sort it out. And it, it does an okay job, but it looks a bit smeared in there. So one way I have found that you can kind of mitigate that is by just doing it in little sections. So perhaps just take out the top there and then take out another section. And you can see it does quite a bit of a better job than if you try to do it all at once. It's doing actually a better job than I thought it was going to do, but it, it does a it does a pretty good job. I mean, there's some there is some weird things happening in there, but you're probably not going to notice them unless you're the photographer. So let's undo that. Now, there is another way, and I, I found this to be uh, probably a better way in some in some respects because it gives you some options so what i'm going to do is just going to grab the lasso tool here and again i'm going to do this in sections because i think this method works better in sections as well so let's just grab this top section of this uh, this stick here and what I'm going to do is just go to Generative Fill, push that. Now, this is where you could do some weird things. You can add things or you can make the frame bigger. You know, you just type in a bunch of words and it'll do all kinds of stuff with you. I'm not really into that. But if you leave it blank and then just push Generate, it'll actually uh, remove that item. But what's really nice about doing it in this method is that it gives you a number of options. So it's done a really great job of removing that top section. But if we go over to the corner here, it'll give you some other options. So you can actually pick and choose one that looks better than the other. Now, they all look pretty good. Um, but I think I probably prefer either number one or the third one. Let's go with number one. And again, so we just get the lasso tool and we'll just uh, generative fill, generate. Uh, these are medium format files. That's why they're taking so long. I probably should have uh, 
downsize these a little bit. But as you can see, it does an absolutely fantastic job. That's version one. Uh, you'd be pretty hard pressed to see that there was a stick there at all. But again, we have some different versions that we can choose from. I actually like number one the best. And then we'll go with the last bit here. We'll just loosely go around that. Generative fill, generate. And as you can see, it's done an absolutely incredible job. And again, we have some different choices here. Let's go with number three. So this is just an alternative method. As I said, the remove tool in regular Photoshop works amazing. But if you're looking for an alternative, uh, that you're having a bit of a hard time with an image, then this might work better for you. I'd like to just take a moment to express my gratitude to Squarespace for sponsoring my latest video and supporting my channel. One of the features that I really appreciate the most about my Squarespace website is the ease with which I can update galleries and pages both from my desktop computer and through the Squarespace app on my smartphone. This allows me to edit my website quickly and elegantly without needing to have any coding knowledge. If this sounds appealing to you, I encourage you to visit squarespace.com and give it a try for free. If you decide to make a purchase, don't forget to use the code Adam Gibbs for a 10% discount on your first order. Let's try another image. Uh, this one I had a really hard time with, with both methods. And this is an image that I took in uh, Scotland. Love the scene, but of course we have this power line all the way down. And if I use the remove tool, now this might do a better job than the other method I'm trying to show you, but let's let's just see here. Make this a little bit smaller and we'll just paint over, we'll just do it in sections again. Let's see how that does. That did a pretty darn good job. That would be hard to beat. But you can see that there is, you know, some of these uh, trees, they, they stop and then there's a bit of mush and then they start up again. So let's see how well the generative fill does. So let's grab the lasso tool here. And we'll just pick and choose more or less the same as before, like so. Generative fill, generate. Let's see how this does. Okay, it's done actually, you can see that there's still a line in there, but it's actually done a better job at cloning in some of the trees behind. Now again, we have three different choices. So here's another choice. And as you can see, I think it's done a better job than the first method and this one's even better so let's continue with this let's see how far we can go with this so we'll go across here generative fill generate and of course it's not you know every time you do this uh it might do a bad job the first time you can always try it again and it, it you know, you keep playing around with it, different sections, picking different sections, and sometimes it'll do a better job on some sections than others. See, this didn't do a very good job at all, except for this one. This one actually looks pretty good. So, and that's all we need. We just need one that's, that's going to look really good. Uh, let's go for a little bit longer here. This one's a little bit looser. Let's see uh, how well this one does here. Okay, so that's not that great. Second method is not too, too bad. Third method is terrible. So this one's not bad, but of course we're gonna have to keep moving in this section here. All right, so I think you get the idea. I'll do the, uh, the very last section and I can show you the whole photograph once I've uh, done all these sections here. Okay, we're all done. And as you can see, there's quite a few layers on the right side here because I did it all in sections. But if I zoom in, you can see that it did a really, really awesome job.
So there you go. So as I said, the remove tool in Photoshop is an excellent tool, but uh, sometimes it does seem to have a bit of a hard time when there's more complexity in the scene. So if you're looking for an alternative, give it a try. As I mentioned, it's the Photoshop beta version. So you have to go to the Adobe website and download it. Uh, give it a try and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Well, thanks for watching this video, everyone. Please smash that thumbs up if you enjoyed the Photoshop tip. And until next time, happy shooting.